Have you ever worried you might lose your job to a robot? I have. Hari Srinivasan finds it could well happen with advances in artificial intelligence or AI transforming the workforce. That's the latest report in our series on invention and innovation breakthroughs. Oh, all in. In a closely watched brains versus artificial intelligence poker match held in Pittsburgh earlier this month, humans pulled off a slim win over a computer program called Cloud Echo. All right, good job. Good game, guys. Good game. Good game. Tuama right. Sanholm, a computer scientist at Carnegie Mellon University, created the algorithms that run Cloud Echo's AI. Those algorithms figure out how you should act strategically. How do you avoid uh, or deal with humans trying to deceive you? And how do you deceive humans? Sanholm predicts Cloud Echo will be able to beat its human opponents within one to five years, much to the chagrin of Bjorn Lee, the leading poker player in this tournament. When that happens, poker will pretty much be dead. But putting pro poker players out of work is not what Sanholm focuses all his time on. There are other things that Cloud Echo can already do better than humans. In my lab, we have developed the algorithms for solving the matching problem for the nationwide kidney exchange for 60% of the transplant centers in the U.S. And there, twice a week, our algorithms make the transplantation plan for the whole country without any manual intervention, where there's scarcity of organs, uh, the AI is making those decisions in the optimal way. Matching the right kidney to the right patient is one example of an algorithmic artificial intelligence. But there are much larger demonstrations hitting the road, quite literally. Daimler has developed a prototype dubbed the Freightliner Inspiration Truck that's being test-driven across Nevada. The hope is that computer-driven trucks can reduce the number of accidents. There are currently 5,000 fatalities a year involving trucks. Drivers would function more like pilots overseeing computerized systems. But it begs the question, what jobs will survive in a new economy driven by automation? Watson. What is Catman do? Catman do. Remember Ken Jennings, the Jeopardy game show champion who lost to IBM's Watson in 2011? He says the writing is on the wall. Here he is in a TEDx talk. And I remember standing there behind that podium as I could hear that little insectoid thumb, and you could hear that little tick, 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 tick. And, uh, and I remember thinking, you know, this is it. I, I felt obsolete. I felt like a, a Detroit factory worker of the 80s seeing a robot that could now do his job on the assembly line, and it was freaking demoralizing. It's not just quiz show contestants that are at risk. As more and more jobs are automated, Jennings' experience could be a harbinger of things to come for American workers. That's the argument made in a new book, Rise of the Robots, Technology and the Threat of a Jobless Future by Martin Ford. Going forward, we may see automation kind of unfold in a top-heavy pattern where a lot of the best jobs are the ones to get impacted. Lawyers, uh, pharmacists, uh, certain areas of medicine like pathology and radiology, um, any kind of white-collar job where you're sitting at a computer, at a desk, what well, the people we might call office drones, those are going to be very susceptible to this. And there could be major disruptions to the U.S. economy, says Daphne Kohler. She's an AI scientist and also president of the massive online learning company Coursera. We're already starting to see jobs that were thought of as intelligent being um, outsourced to computers. So, for example, a large part of a paralegal's job, which is hunting down the relevant references for a particular problem, is something that you would have thought requires intelligence, and now they're pretty good software systems that do not 100% of a paralegal's job, but 80 to 90%. Will artificial intelligence software do to the paralegal what the tractor did to the farmer? It's quite likely that that will happen, and I think that there will be entire job categories that will go away. Well. We humans have always been resilient. With each industrial revolution, we've adapted, creating new jobs with new technologies. The optimistic perspective is that this will happen here and that the jobs that will be created will by nature be higher end, more cognitively interesting jobs that are beyond the spectrum of what an artificial intelligence program can do. Leaving the less interesting jobs to robotic helpers like Bottler, an automated bellhop who cruises the halls of this Aloft hotel. Is that such a bad thing? 
Stuart Russell, who directs the AI lab at the University of California, Berkeley, doesn't think so. Some people think that inevitably every robot that does any task uh, is a bad thing for the human race because it could be taking a job away. But that isn't necessarily true. It can, you can also think of the robot as making a person more productive uh, and enabling people to do things that are currently economically infeasible. Uh, but a person plus a robot or a fleet of robots could do things that would be really useful. A perhaps simple example, cleaning up graffiti. In many, many cities, the graffiti is just left because uh, it's too expensive. But if I had a team of robots that I could take around the city with me and point them to what needed to be cleaned up, I could get 10 times as much done. And there will be positions for graffiti cleaning supervisors, which didn't exist before. Graffiti cleaning supervising robots might exist in the future, but our economy is already evolving. There are plenty of jobs that didn't exist 10 years ago that are now in high demand in fields like digital marketing and data analysis. In fact, according to McKinsey and Company, the United States faces a shortage of data analysts. Almost 190,000 people are needed to analyze and understand big data. But will those jobs ultimately be filled by people or by deep learning machines? Deep learning is a new type of AI that relies on neural networks. They're computer programs modeled after the human brain and nervous system. Hey guys, how's the training page looking? At the Palo Alto office of MetaMind, engineers are using the technology to help computers see by quickly identifying images and placing them in categories. The software can also understand nuance in the written word. Richard Socher is co-founder and CTO. He says the technology will aid humans, not replace them. If you can bring the intelligence of the smartest uh, people in a field and still it in an algorithm with deep learning, you could really help a lot of people. One example, he says, is in the field of medicine. If the best doctors in the world train an algorithm to find um, you know, various different uh, problems in CT scans or in x-rays, uh, mammograms, for instance, um, you could build an algorithm that is almost as good as the best doctors in the world. A human can only look at so many mammograms in their lifetime. An algorithm could look at you know, millions and millions and eventually find subtle things that may have not even been that obvious to a human eye. So how will society adapt to a computer intelligence that can do work, which until now only humans could? What people have going for them that computers as of yet don't is the incredible adaptability of the human mind. The ability to learn new skills, the ability to really adapt to unexpected situations. And so what we really need to do is to help people become even better at that. Just like in a poker game, we don't know what the outcome will be. We humans are raising the stakes as we continue to drive advances in AI technology. So it'll be up to us to stay at the table. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Hari Srinivasan. And you can watch more stories from our Thinking Machines series on our website, pbs.org newshour.